Welcome back once again for another SnowRunner truck review. Today we're going to take a closer look at the one and only SnowRunner cover model and longtime original truck that has been around since this journey began. So before we start, I ask that you please help support the channel by liking the video and subscribing to the channel as well. Alright, so without further ado, let's jump into this and check it out. As a member of the 915 series, the Freightliner M916A1 entered military service in 1978 as a light equipment transport. With a 6x6 configuration and a turbocharged Cummins diesel engine, it is said to pull loads of 20 tons. The 916 was outfitted with armor to protect against small arms fire, artillery shell splinters, and some protection against IEDs. The contract with the US military and Freightliner awarded a total of 1,009 M916A1 tractors. In SnowRunner, the freight is the poster child of the game itself, yet the extension of its fame doesn't go far beyond the cover. The M916A1 is another specialized vehicle with limited uses. Its performance can impress players if you can look past the brief garage interview. I believe it can be a good asset to your fleet as well. As usual, the base stats will briefly be on your screen momentarily while we jump right into downside number one, small fuel tank and mediocre consumption. Pulling no punches, we have to start with the area I am most critical on. If I can make this one brief, I will say that the freight's fuel tank is rather small and its consumption isn't the greatest either. It is true that all trucks need support when on the mission trail, but some just need it more frequently. Sadly, this poster child is one of those vehicles. Downside number two, tires. The next short but notable downside is the tire options for the 916. Being a military truck and viewing photos of this vehicle, the tires look more like a OHD than a UOD. This is kind of a letdown, yet the freight still performs quite well with that standard 47 inch loadout. Downside number 3, Utility. In reality, the actual Freightliner is meant to do basically what it does in SnowRunner. We can complain all we want for more add-ons, yet it's mostly staying true to its add-on capability. However, I do wish the winch on the back had some type of special properties or the ability to remove it for a potential small crane with a saddle setup. I think this would add more detail and potentially more use for the freight, but hey, it is what it is. Downside number four, trailer issues. As some of you know, I'm a huge advocate of the small crane semi-trailer combo over any other when moving cargo for many reasons that I will not lecture you on today. However, the small problem with the 916 is the low saddle semi-trailer contacting on turning. Oddly enough, the sideboard semi-trailer contacts the cab much earlier than the flatbed, but the angles still aren't that good. The step deck is another one that sadly has this issue as well. For me, this is a downside because semis can be easily maneuverable in tight situations, yet I couldn't help pointing this one out. With those cab semi-trailer collisions, a good substitute if needed would be the gooseneck if you can tolerate its low clearance and one less cargo slot. Also, I might add that the freight cannot attach a fuel carrier semi-trailer add-on as well. Downside number five, stability concerns. While I find it hard to label it straight up tippy, I can tell you what the freight has going for it and what's against it. First, the weight characteristic still shows more weight in its frame, yet there is more weight in its cab compared to the 114 SD. In addition to its weight being somewhat favorable, I must mention that it is a tad bit front heavy. This is evident when the nose dives down into mud and the rear axles jar up into the air. Also, if you submerge it into water, this will easily show the same. This can cause you to flip once your back axles come off the ground, especially on uneven terrain. The freight silhouette looks tall, but it's actually the same height as other trucks, yet its axle width is somewhat narrow, which doesn't help its cause with more weight in its cab as we mentioned. 
When hauling cargo attached to a trailer, this is usually not a big deal because the weight and the trailer act as a counterbalance. Yet just be prepared to throw out that quick winch every now and then. And finally, coming in at downside number six, vehicle level requirement. Lastly, we could not complete this list without highlighting the fact that the cover model is locked behind a level requirement. I'm not sure what the rationale was to put that in place, but in truth, this truck would have been so nice to use in the early parts of the game. Regardless, I don't think being on the cover should merit being hid behind a level requirement for too long. While we did have some concerning downsides in that list, they can be managed, but now it's time to pivot and talk about the good qualities. Here are the pros for the Freightliner M916A1. Coming in at the normal upside number one, power, all wheel drive, and differential locking. As you can see throughout the video, we can tell that the freight definitely pulls cargo when called upon. Its engine is shared with other notable strong trucks, and it's complemented with a switchable all wheel drive and always on differential locking that comes stock with the vehicle when you purchase it. I've briefly spoken before on why I love the always on differential locking and the switchable all wheel drive, but just to recap, it allows for better performance outside of low gear, fuel savings if needed, and also the ability to redirect power to the vehicle's back axle as well. Upside number two, clearances and wheelbase. The M916A1's clearances are pretty good despite being front heavy and also its wheelbase helps reduce high centers. While I do think shorter wheelbase vehicles struggle with stability somewhat, it is still advantageous to have these two features in certain situations. Upside number three, weight. Even though the Freight doesn't have the best tire options, it is one of the heavier trucks in its class which we know increases its grip value. I do wish its weight was more in the rear to complement the always on differential locking, but overall from testing, it does feel like its grip holds up pretty darn well. Upside number 4, Saddle Hauling. We've spoken about the vehicle's front heavy nature and stability but I think upside number four helps in both of those areas. As a specialized vehicle, it's really made to do a few things, and I think it does them rather well. Oddly enough, with a loaded semi-trailer, the front heavy balance is actually normalized. The other thing I noticed is that the trailers can actually aid in balance, especially in turns where the weight of the trailer actually stops the vehicle from tipping over in some cases. This one seems very weird, I know, but when you test it, I believe you'll understand. And finally, to close out the upsides list at the number 5 spot, challenging yet enjoyable. To keep our final upside rather brief but positive, the Freight is a truck you have to fit in to a select few roles. It can be difficult to use with those slew of downsides we mentioned earlier, yet I still think it's a tough truck and a good experience overall. Without cargo, the freight can be very hard to drive on uneven surfaces. However, with cargo, I actually had confidence in its stability. Alright, so moving on to my personal ratings for this vehicle. For power, its engine is rather strong when tested with loads. For terrain navigation, a rating of 3. Having a short wheelbase helps you crawl over obstacles, yet without a trailer, the freight seems a little wobbly at times. Even though the Freightliner might have those drivetrain features, combining our downsides definitely takes some time to get used to. For aesthetics, well, it's on the cover and it's an old army truck. I just wish it had camo paint as well. Stability with cargo is probably above average, but without cargo, the Freight's balance can get away from center pretty quick with changing terrain. A smaller fuel tank, coupled with mediocre to sporadic consumption, merits this one a rating of 2. In truth, the freight can't do much other than hauling cargo on semi-trailers, so I felt this one was fitting. This rating probably would have been a 5 if it could attach a heavier set tire, but as it stands, because of its weight, I felt it was a pretty good score. 
So in conclusion, the Freightliner M916A1 is a truck that doesn't get much attention other than being on the cover of SnowRunner. As we explained throughout the video, there are ways to increase its popularity and uniqueness. As some of you know, I'm a huge advocate of using the crane with a semi-trailer, but in truth, I felt a little let down with those contact issues and the inability to combine those two features. However, I don't think this is a deal breaker. Yet because of that information, knowing your routes will be important for maneuvering purposes. The 916 is front heavy and set up to be mainly carrying heavy loads with that always on differential locking and this makes it very enjoyable. I believe its balance behaves so much better when the vehicle is doing what it's limited to do. The vehicle won't bounce around as much and the weight from the trailer load will actually increase its grip. If I were limited to one complaint, it would simply be to allow this truck to unlock earlier. I remember seeing the cover of the game and saying to myself, I want to drive that truck with that load. However, that never happened because so many others came before it and also they could do similar things. So in closing, the Freightliner M916A1 is a specialized vehicle that's good for the job it was purposed for. It's never going to be a trailblazer that can fly down muddy roads, but it's going to churn its way through and grind it out. If you can take its downsides into consideration and put to use its upsides, I feel players can have satisfaction when pulling those heavy loads. Just make sure you have frequent support with you. Try this one out and let me know what you think. I really hope this review gave you a fresh, new perspective of the Freightliner M916A1. Please smash that like button. Definitely share this video with someone who is currently struggling with the game and subscribe to the channel and hit that bell so you don't miss any future content. Hope you all have a wonderful day, God bless, and stay upright.